What's up, Pistons fam? This is Major Taylor. Welcome back to the official Detroit Pistons podcast. And today, today is a really, really good one. We got JD, Jalen Duran. Uh, we talked about his time in Sharon Hill. We talked about his expectations for the league and a lot more. So let's get into it. When you think of the Pistons, you think it's just hard work and just gritty basketball. So I feel like that's just the identity you got to have when you're putting on that jersey. Wait, can I say, uh, everybody has a plan until they get punched in the mouth. JD, what's going on, man? What's up? So, first and foremost, I want to thank you for being here. Uh, just because, and I'm sure you've seen this, anytime that you read anything about you, if anything, anytime you see an article about you, anytime someone's talking about you, people are considering you like one of the cornerstone pieces for the Pistons. Like, how do you feel that embrace from the city, mm-hmm. but also, like, from players around the league? Yeah. Uh, I mean, it's a blessing. I, I look at it as a blessing and a testament to the work I'm putting in. For real, for real. I mean, we haven't done nothing yet. We haven't won nothing yet. Um, so, it really is just talk right now. So, we're trying to turn it into reality. Yeah. But one thing I can say is, like, even with the current situation, like, one thing that is great to see out there is, like, the bonds that's being created with mm-hmm. the team. Like, mm-hmm. Seeing you and Kate's connection, which we didn't get to see a lot of last year on the court, um, the bond between you and Stu, just mm-hmm. in general, mm-hmm. like how has that like been from say your rookie year to now? Yeah. It's huge. It's huge because, like you said, us building that bond is everything for what we're trying to build here in Detroit. You know, Kate being like the franchise player and me having that bond with him is huge because that creates that chemistry on the court. And then Stu being, you know, the leader and, the, like, the heart and soul of the team is everything for us. He kind of brings everybody together. So all of us kind of having that that brotherhood and that friendship off the court yeah. kind of really helps us on the court because it's like now we can talk to each other. Like, you know, when somebody's lacking in one area, you be able to talk to them as a brother and kind of pick them up. And it really helps us. It really is going to help us a long way as we keep building. Yeah. How have y'all built those connections? Like – you said you said yeah. now that y'all are friends, like y'all yeah, are friends yeah, off the court, like, like brothers. Um, I feel like all of us are around the same age, mm-hmm. you know what I mean? So we just connect, and I feel like the front office has done a great job in terms of just putting guys with the same character and the same mindset, the same morals in the locker room. One thing I want to call out, and I don't want to make this a, a podcast about your age, but mm-hmm. I'm sure you've seen the stats. At, at 20 years old right now, um, you are second in rebounds uh, all time for someone your age. You're also second in double-doubles, only to behind Dwight Howard. Mm-hmm. You know, that's not a small thing. Yeah. So when you were drafted, are where you are now as a player surpass expectations? Are you at expectations? Are you below expectations of what you thought? Uh, I will say I'm on pace. On you pace? Know, when I was getting drafted, everybody thought I was too young. Some people thought I was going to be in the G League, and uh, some people thought I wasn't ready. You know what I mean? And I just took that as like, more fuel to the fire. Like I never really, I know what I know what I could do. I know who I am, and I know where I want to be in life, not just in basketball. I know where I want to be in life, and right. I know what I need to do to get there. So as of right now, you know, I'm right on pace. You know, I'm kind of starting to hit my stride. I'm the game is slowing down for me. I'm learning more. Um, just building with my teammates, and I feel like I'm on the right path. Yeah, that confidence that you have when you say you're right on pace. Um, did you get that? Have you always had that, or is that something that when you were at University of Memphis playing, you, like, had a lot of veteran yeah. leadership there? Like, you had uh, NBA vet Penny Hardaway, you had the Larry Browns, you had the Rasheed Wallace. Was that built there, or is that something you've just grown up with? Uh, I'd probably say it come from the work. You know, I, mean, work. I, I work hard. You know I mean? I work on my body, my game, and just, just studying the game of basketball itself. You know, I watch a lot of film, and just I care about it. So I trust in the work that I put in, and that's what gives me my confidence. Yeah. Can you go a little deeper and, like, what work do you put in? Like, are you – do you have, like, a regiment during the season mm-hmm. versus a regiment off this – or during the off season? Like, yeah. what type of work are you putting in? Well, I'll probably say um, off the season, of course, you're getting a lot more work in than during the season. But during the season, I try to maintain my body more so. You know what I mean? But even coming in early, you know, before practice, getting up shots, working with uh, some of our development coaches and – you know, watching film, I watch every game probably two, three times after we play, you know, breaking down film, not just watching like my highlights, but watching what the team could do better, watching where we're struggling at, watching yeah. why we're struggling in those areas. Um, 
And it's really come down, that's really a mental thing for me I mean, during the season. But off season, you know, it's a lot more physical, trying to, you know, keep my body, recover, and get stronger, get faster, work on my game skill, all that type of stuff. From a mental standpoint, how do you get through a 82 game, like a, a yeah. NBA season? Like yeah. it's, a, it's a long, long season. It's a long, long season, season, you know? Yeah, yeah. And it's only your second year doing it. Like yeah. how do you mentally pre- prep yourself and prepare for that? Um, I'd probably say. One, like your off time, like your time away, well, for me, is very important. Like, for me, it's like, I like to, when I'm not playing basketball, I'm not mm-hmm. working out, I like to just be in my own world. You know what I mean? Whether it be, I got two dogs, chilling with my dogs, and just watching the movie, kind of decompressing yeah. from it mentally, or just, just out the way, you know what I mean? But when I'm in it, like, we got a road trip, and I know we got games, it's staying in it. Like, staying locked in, and just knowing, like, what's going on, because, you know what I mean? This is, this is my job. This is what I do. This is how I feed my family. So I try to give it all I got. Yeah. What kind of dogs you have? I have a cane corso and a Labrador retriever. Oh, I have a lab too. Yeah. What type? Like black lab. Black lab. Yeah. Mine is like a like an orange. It's orange, weird. Like a yeah. It's like orange. a really yeah. It's like a, almost a reddish. I bet it got like colored eyes. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yep. Yeah, you got a foreign lab. Look, man. <laughs> uh, but I'm just like you. It's the, it's the mental thing. Like yeah. going home and seeing the dogs. Just, yeah. Yeah. It just changes everything for you. Thanks. Yeah. Um, so I do want to go back to something you said a little bit earlier, where you said you, you're on pace for where you want your career, but you're also on pace for where you want your, your life. Mm-hmm. Can you go a little bit deeper into, like, when you see 10 years out, 20 years out, where do you see not only your career, but where do you see your life? Uh, 10 years, i probably say just – so my goal, one of my goals, especially off the court, uh, it's it's kind of to elevate the people around me. I know a lot of people just say that, but that's something I'm really, I really kind of am invested in doing. Mm-hmm. Um, my circle, like the people who came up, the people who helped me get here in in, in this position. I want to kind of help them and build them up, and not only just give them things, but give them opportunity. You know what I mean? Instead of just handouts, like opportunities to elevate themselves. And I call that, you know, I'd say something called PPIP. And that's really my thing. Uh, it's called it's putting people in position to provide for the people they love. But he's just shorting the people EIP, yeah. putting people in position. And that's just, you know, me trying to do my best to put people in position to have opportunities to succeed in life. Because where we come from and a lot of people's situation, they don't have those opportunities. So I look at myself as like the ticket and the outlet for, you know, everybody yeah. else to grow. When you say putting people in position, that just brings me to uh, some of the things you were doing in the off season, like JD Day, yeah. and it was the JD All Star. Yeah, 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 yeah. Can you speak a little bit more about yeah. that than like those experiences? Because you did it back in your hometown, right? Yeah, yeah. Sharon so, Hill. Yep, I'm from Sharon Hill, Pennsylvania. So I was blessed enough. Uh, I think the summer, I think it might have been after I got drafted. The summer, I, like I got drafted, like maybe a month after the draft in August. I was blessed to. You know, they named a day after me mm-hmm. um, and kind of got like the key to the city and all that. And it was like a huge blessing. And I kind of wanted to do more with it. I didn't want to just have it. And then I was just, it's just a day. I wanted to make it as like an opportunity to give back to my community. So, I mean, I got with my mom. My mom was a huge part of my whole family. My mom, my aunt, grandma, the mayor, like everybody kind of helped pitch in and just make it a huge event. I wanted it to be like a day, you know, kids were going back to school. I wanted it to be like a thing that they could come out and enjoy themselves and kind of bring something positive back to the community. It's a lot of negative things going on in the world. So yeah. with these kids, I just wanted to show them something positive and I feel like it was that. And then I also have like a, a basket, a summer league out there, it's Jalen Dorn Summer League in Sharon Hill and that was like the all-star game. So. Uh, I was able to go out there and let the kids see me and kind of go out there on the court and play with them and just have a good time. It was just a good day. You know what I mean? That's all I wanted to be, was just positive energy, moon bounces, rides, and just fun. So it seems like you like to do a lot in the community. Yeah. Where, where did you get that, like, that energy from? Or I don't know. I mean, I just – I feel like my mom put it in me. Like, it's, it's, it's just giving back. Like, can't take it with you, so – just spreading the love. I don't. I, I don't. I don't like to see people struggle. You know what I mean? If I can help in a way, then I try to. And I know, like I said, it's a lot of a lot of things going on in this world. A lot of people going through what they're going through. So, if I can shed the positive light on any situation, I try to. So I do want to talk a little bit more just about Sharon Hill and growing mm-hmm. up there. It's a little outside of Philly. Yeah. 
So did you grow up a Sixers fan? So I, I was supported though. Yeah. But I was more like a players guy. You know what I mean? I, I, I enjoy yeah. players. Who were your players back then? My favorite player growing up was KD for sure. You know, AI was an icon, but I caught like the later AI, but just because yeah. he's an icon. You know, Brian was Brian. You know, everybody kind of supported Brian. But I'd probably say KD was like, growing up was like my favorite player. So, maybe, but like, did you take anything from KD's game? Or did you take anything from anyone's game back in the day where you're like, I'm building um, my career yeah. off of this? It's crazy because I, I really didn't start taking basketball seriously, like wanting to do something with it to like, probably like I was a sophomore in high school. So throughout all this, all the time before, I was just playing for fun. It was never really like something I'm like, oh, I, I need to, you know, work on this, try to do this, yeah. da, 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 da. Like I always played, you know, football, I played different sports, but basketball didn't become like, okay, this is what I'm going to do until like my sophomore year. Yeah. What was the moment where you were like, this is what I'm going to do? And how tall uh, were you? Uh, my sophomore, I was probably like six, eight, six, nine. Okay. Around that. Um, and then I just I, I just started to develop. I got with um, somebody like my mentor, my big brother, uh, Desmond Irving. He is the assistant coach at University of Miami right now. I, um, I was with him and, you know, he was one of the coaches at the time at Roman Catholic to the high school that I went to. And he came in and just was like seeing how much potential I had, I guess. And he was the one who kind of got me in the gym. I started working out at LA Fitness, you know, with him. He waking me up the early morning, <clears throat> going in there early. Yeah coming back later at the practice, going in there, like we was just getting it, working out. And then I seen how much better I was getting, how much better I was growing. And then, you know, things started to happen for me. And I was like, okay, I can be good at this. And right. took off from there. So when did you realize I'm gonna be an NBA? Uh, like this is, this is really yeah. happening. When they got to the 13th pick and they called my name, that's when I was like- You knew man. before then. See, and the people say like, I, I, I never, I used to hate, like when people used to ask me that, not saying I hate that you no, asked me that, but like, yeah. cause I, I I never wanted to think like that. You know what I mean? I never, I, nothing's guaranteed. You know what I mean? When you think like that, it's kind of, it make you complacent. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? I, I always wanted to feel like it's more I could do. Like, you know, I always, it's a blessing to even be here right now, yeah. talking to you, you know what I mean? In this position. So I never wanted to think like, oh, I knew I was going to be in that. Like, I, I know I'm going to get to the league. I know I'm going to do this. I wanted to, yeah. I worked my butt off to get here, but I always looked at it with an open mind. like. Like, I'm just gonna lead with humble. Go. Yeah, I'm gonna I'm a go, I'm gonna work as hard as I can. I'm gonna do everything I can. I'm a, if I don't get drafted here, I'm gonna still go another route, try to get in there, I'm gonna do what I gotta do. But I never wanted to be like, yeah, it's just gonna happen for yeah. me. You know what I mean? So, 13th pick. Mm -hmm. Now you're, you're in the league. Yeah. The work really begins. Yeah. How was those first few months for you? I mean, you, you were drafted one team. Yeah. You then got traded to another. Yeah. It was, it was. Uh, like you were saying, people were saying you were was, going to be in the G League. It was different. It was different for me. I um, it was a lot of like learning for me. Honestly, them first couple of months, like just just learning. Like I was, you know, learning from Stu, learning from the coaches, learning from Coach Casey, and just talking to everybody. Just you know what I mean. Just trying to take in the information because, like you said, I was young, so I knew I knew I wasn't just going to come right in and just like take over everything right away as a process. I had to learn, I had to build, and it was, you know what I mean, wait my turn. And that's what I did. I grinded every day, worked my butt off, continued to work, continued to learn, and just get information on the game and how I can help the team, how I can affect the game on this level. And, you know, day by day, things worked out for me up until this point. And uh, Just continue to grow. Yeah, that's all it is. Is there any advice that Stu gave you during that time? That that stuck with you, or any advice that anyone on the team has gave you during that time? Uh, so I so Stu helped me in a way that it it wasn't it wasn't how you think it. It wasn't like like now it's like he plays like the big brother role and uh -huh. kind of like you know what I mean. But coming in, I feel like he kind of helped me get ready for the NBA in terms of coming in. He was aggressive, like out the gate, training camp, beat me up, throwing me. You know, Stu is. A big guy, so he yeah. pushing me around, and I'm like, I'm like, bro, what's up? Like, but he just throwing me this, this, and everything was just super aggressive, hitting me all the time. Every play, every time the rebound go up, he go to the chest, and I was just like, God dang, like, what's going yeah. on? This what it's like, and 
I feel like that's more to me. That that brought like a certain type of aggression and knowing like, all right, this is what I can do to affect the game. Now going against playing with that every day, this out here, nobody else plays like that. Like no Stu does something that nobody in the NBA does. Like nobody is constantly hitting you and just aggressive and just being strong and overly aggressive every play. So playing with Stu had got me ready for that. Now I'm mm-hmm. going in and I'm ready to see every big and I'm ready to play against them. And I'm like, now I'm being the, the aggressor, you know what I mean? Cause he kind of molded that into me. And I tell him that all the time. Like at the time I was like, why is he like, man, he just going at me every time. He, he a leader by action. Yeah. So I feel like he, he kind of, he kind of put that, he kind of sparked that energy in me. Yeah. And now y'all are considered the dog pound. Yeah. And that's something that, brother. that, you two, I feel like, really have that bond yeah. with. You know, some people may be added in every now and then, yeah, but yeah, yeah, yeah. I feel like y'all are really the cornerstone of the, right. the dog pound. Yeah. When y'all are on the court, what are the things that y'all like, as the dog pound, we are trying to do out here? All the dirty work. All the dirty work. All dog, like, I'm trying, I don't want to curse, but all the dog stuff, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, you're going to see me, I'm, I'm big, but I'm going to dive on the floor, you know what I mean? I'm going to go try to block every shot. Uh, I'm going to set a hard screen. All the dirty work, you know what I mean? All boxing out, just all the stuff that people don't want to do. And I'm going to be physical with you the whole game. You know Stu going to be physical with you the whole game, probably after the game, mm-hmm. you know what I mean? But that's just, just, we just embody that. And I feel like that kind of brings a certain energy to the team and to our defense and what we bring to the floor. Sure. Is that something that you want to, you want that energy to be the Pistons energy moving forward? Like, yeah. I feel like in every era of Pistons, Basketball, yeah. um, especially the successful eras, there's been like kind of that that aggressive, yeah, yeah, that yeah, dirtiness, yeah, yeah. that doing the the mm-hmm. little things to win. Mm-hmm. Do you see that as like this third iteration mm-hmm. is going to be just maybe yeah. not exactly those teams, yeah. but similar? Yeah, I feel like you play. need that. You need that. Like you need that to win. You need that. Like somebody, at least somebody on the team, to kind of bring that type of energy. You know what I mean? And that's like you said, that's what Detroit embodies. Like. When you think of the Pistons, you think of just hard work and just gritty basketball. So I feel like that's just the identity you got to have when you're putting on that jersey. Yeah. All right. So I'm going to slow it down a little bit. I'm going to put you in the hot seat. Okay. So I'm going to just roll off as many questions as possible. And I just yeah. first thought, first thing that comes to your mind, okay. answer that way. All right. Okay. So I'm going to have a clock here that you'll be able to hear. All right? Mm-hmm. So tell me when you're ready to go. Let's do it. Let's do it. All right. Apple Music or Spotify? Apple Music. We're going to stop the clock really quick. So yeah, okay, who was your okay. top listen to artist this year? I didn't look at it, but off the top of my head, I could tell you, it's definitely Erica Badu in there. Okay. Uh, Probably some artists from Philly. Uh, Shout out some if you got them. Uh, probably like a little bit of Leaf Ward. Uh... Let me think. Who else would be in there? Mm, Mary J. Mary J. in there. Um, who else would be in there? Mm, who I listen to a lot. I'm trying to think. I listen to such a variety. Like artists, it's hard to say one artist that I'll just be listening to. I don't know. I'm, I gotta look at that. I gotta look sure. at that. Yeah. yeah, look at it. I'm, I gotta see who won there. I'm gonna start the clock back up, uh-huh. and then we can go back with Netflix or Hulu. Netflix. Uh, last show you really enjoy watching? Raising Canaan. Crocs, yes or no? Sometimes. Uh, TikTok or Instagram? Instagram. Uh, best dressed on the team? Me. All right. Uh, so I want, I want to stay with the fashion conversation really okay. quick because one thing that I've noticed is you take, it seems like you take a lot of pride in your, your fits Stop during too. game days, uh, during arrivals. Uh, where did your interest of fashion come from? Uh, just growing up and like certain things I couldn't get and I, I couldn't have and you know, now I'm able to do it, so why not? Yeah. So I have four pictures here, okay. and now we're gonna have you rate your fits. Okay. And let me know. Tell me a little bit about that. This one. This this was Supreme coat. See this one, I, I liked it, but I I should have had the the coat opened up a little more. You know what I mean, but it was smooth. You know, this was chill. You know what I mean? I got the uh, Travis Scott sixes on. I think those are sixes. With the uh, this is the custom Gucci Pistons bag. 
Yeah, it's a smooth little fit. I mean, I forgot where we was at, but it was nowhere that I had to like. I didn't throw nothing crazy. You know? When you uh, when you're, do you, how early do you plan these fits out? Is this something you do day of or like right before you travel, or is it like you haven't like planned out for months? Nah, night like before. Some, some guys. Yeah, I, I go in the closet, see what I got. Night before, lay it out, see how I look, try it on. For sure. Put it in the bag. All right. Birthday fit. Yeah, this was, I think this was either the day after my birthday or something like that. We had a game. I always, I mean, majority of the time, I'm going to be wearing all black. Uh, and this kind of embodied that. Coat was fire. It was cold. It was perfect time to wear it. it looked like a mink. It ain't really a mink. Uh, leather pants. I'm not too. I'm not too much of like a leather pants guy. I like they couldn't have been tight. If they was tight, I wouldn't have yeah. worn. Them. You just did it because it was birthday. Yeah, it was, you gotta do something yeah, a little different. Yeah, it gotta pop out a little bit. So you know what I mean. Gave it a little something, a little JaVinci bag. It's just the black on black on black on black sure. on black. So between these two, on black on black. Which one? Which one you rating for higher? Oh, which one I'm rating higher? Yeah. These. Oh, black on black, all day. Black on black. See, it was better without the hat too. But the hat was smooth. I ain't mad at it. You know what I mean? I ain't mad at it. I feel like we got a lot of pics of you in that in that fit. Yeah, I like that. It, it stood out. All right, one. This right here. This was out of Toronto. This was smooth. I really ain't even like this fit that much. I thought it was a little basic, but it came out better than I thought. You know what I mean? A little Bottega went with the little green in the in the. Uh, I think these is who decide war. The Who Decide War pants with the Mary sweatshirt. Smooth, you know what I mean? Can't go wrong with the uh, the Fazos. That's like a, am I comparing this to another one? Yeah, it was, oh, uh, let's just keep rating them with these. Oh, the, oh, yeah. so, oh, let me put them in order, let me get you right. So right now, this number one, you know what I mean? Black Birthday on black. fit. Yeah, black on black on black. See right here, I don't know. Because they both kind of chill, but they like, you know what I mean? Uh, uh, let me see. That's tough. It's a tough one. It's a tough one. I might tough say one? that's a tough one. We gonna come back. I got. Yeah, see the other I got. One. I got one more for you, just because yeah, you was rocking the one. the top, Patrick. Okay. 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 This is okay. collab. Okay. 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 Yeah. I I ain't gonna lie. I just I just loved how this sweatsuit like fit. Yeah. yeah, it was a great fit. Like it felt my body right. You know, I mean, it was comfortable. I didn't really try to do too much with it. For sure. Shout out to Desiree. Yeah, shout out to Desiree. Uh, so <sighs> give me three words to describe your style. Uh, I don't like to do too much. Like, mm -hmm. I ain't in the, like all the while. Like it don't have to be too crazy. Me, I'm kind of just casual. But like you might add a little a little flair to it, a little something to it. But it's just, you know what I mean? Normal, chill. Might just be jeans and something. Might just be sweats. But put it together so it look nice. Yeah. Is there anything else? Because I've also seen you just recently did something with our magazine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, is this a lane you see yourself going more into? This fashion, <laughs> the modeling? Uh, you was doing a little bit of everything in yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't know. I don't know. I'm. I'm Dipping and diving. I'm trying to see what I what I what I like, what I want to do. Okay. You know what I mean, I don't know. Probably you you maybe see me. I ain't gonna say no, but maybe. Elysian Air wants to know what are the three things? What are your three must-haves? Three essential items that you have to bring whenever you travel. All right. So let me think. Three essential items. Uh. No brainer off the top. Gotta be, I would say, CarMax. CarMax is probably the first one because all the traveling, you on the plane, yep. and then you on TV, you can't be on there with the then white you lips. You're going to different locations, yeah, different weather. Can't, can't have the white lips. Can't do it. Can't do it. But let me think. This is the other two. Uh,. Well, I'm I'm gonna say I'm gonna say iPad only because I do so much with it. Like I watch film yeah. on the plane, so I watch my movies. 
you know what I mean? I do a lot with the iPad, so I'll be online shopping on the pad. Just it passed time. Like while we traveling, I gotta have my iPad. I'm on it from the bus to the plane, back to the bus, to the hotel. I don't even watch the TV, I just watch my iPad. So, gotta be the iPad. You be having like movies downloaded on there already? Yeah, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. What's the, what's the last few movies, movies you watched? I watched this movie called, um, I think it was like, it was like made, I think it was Tom Cruise. I think that's his name. It was like Made in America. Made, y'all seen that? You know what I'm talking about? Made, it's like on Netflix. You know what I'm talking about? What's this called? Like yeah, yeah, what's that called? That movie was fire. I just watched it on the plane. It was like Made in America, something like that. It, it was, was Tom Cruise? Yeah, it was fire. For I sure. just watched that. It was fire. Any other ones? Movies. My favorite movie of all time is Get Rich or Die Trying. So I'll just rewatch that over and over again. You know what I mean? Also, I mean, the album was also. Yeah, nah, you know. It's one of the best. Second or none. Yeah. You know I mean? It was a debate, though. I'm going to ask you a question. I'm going to ask all y'all a question. It was a debate Ooh. in the locker room, uh-huh. right? We said, who. I don't know if it was who had a bigger impact or who was the better. I don't think it was who was, who was the better artist, but yep. it might have been who had the bigger impact, Lil Wayne or 50 Cent during their time. Now, we know 50 Cent's probably was shorter, yeah, but just the impact, it's a tough one. I said Wayne. I'm, I'm going with Wayne. But it was an argument that 50 was, you know what I mean? I'm going with Wayne because I feel like he then ushered in a few more other more artists right. that he had a longer did. impact. Yeah, exactly, yeah. exactly. What's it called? Uh, Trendsetter. Yeah, that's what he is. Yeah, Trendsetter. Yeah. But Fifty still like. Nah, yeah, Fifty is Fifty. You can't even. You know what I mean? He he did what he did, but he ain't no Wayne. Nah, he ain't Wheezy. Uh, and one one last essential. One last essential. Uh, you gonna catch me with a fitted on, so I'll probably say the fitted. I'll pack like four or five of them, won't even wear them, but just to have them, just in case. You bring four or five fitted yeah. with you on the road? Yeah. Even if it's like a one one game trip? Yeah, I might wanna flip him out. It's just like whenever. it's changing, like boom, I don't like this one right now. I might put the other one on, you never know. Or I might just have them just in case. I gotta have the fitted though. Do you switch them like, so? Getting on the bus, you'll have one. Have you ever then switched nah, I ain't it? Do all that. I ain't do all that. It just depends on like yeah. what I'm wearing for the game or something. I might put a fitted on that match the fit, and then yeah. I might wear one to the plane that matches what I'm wearing to the plane. You feel me? Then it's a mood thing. Like you gotta yeah, wake yeah, up. It's yeah, like yeah, how yeah. am I feeling today? Exactly. Exactly. For sure. All right. Thank you for being here. Mm-hmm. Please shout out your socials. Where can people find you? You can find me at the Pistons facility every day of the week. The Henry Ford uh, Detroit Pistons practice facility. Uh, week. On, on social though, where? Find me on Instagram at Jalen Dorn, my name. Yeah. All right. And uh, thanks everybody for watching. This has been another episode of the official Detroit Pistons podcast. Boom, boom. Thanks, bro. And it's a wrap. That's a wrap. Uh, thanks for watching this episode of the official Detroit Pistons podcast. Like always, like, comment, subscribe. And wherever you're watching or listening, we also want you to rate. So do all of that for me. And then know that there's just more coming. There's more coming from Pistons TV. Have a good one.